Hello people of the internet, my name is Tatiana and I'm in Tenerife, Spain. Join me as we explore the island, check out some popular places, but also some hidden locations and we will definitely try some local food. The island has so many different sceneries from beaches through cliffs all the way into forests so everybody that is interested in different things can find something for themselves here. And now without further ado, let's get into exploring. One advice I can give you for this location that would be definitely rent a car. You can get around with a bus and public transport, but you get to explore a lot more if you can move around on your own. I found this recommendation that there is this random arc in the middle of nowhere next to the road, so we went here to check it out. It's pretty cool. You can take very Instagrammable pictures here. Uh, but be careful when you're going down because <laughs> there is a lot of gravel and you can easily slip. I know what I'm saying. Um, actually, fell myself. All good. Survived. Nothing's broken so far. <laughs> After a short drive, we came across this beautiful beach with clear water. It was a bit tough getting in because there were stones all over, but it was a perfect place to snorkel and dive. It was such a great experience and almost immediately after we got into the water, we found a turtle. It was my first time swimming with a turtle, so it was super exciting. Such a cutie, she was very calm, just swimming around, not really caring for people. The beach itself wasn't really a place to chill out, it was very stony so it wasn't that comfortable so after a while we decided to drive and get some dinner. We just visited this restaurant that was voted like a second best on the island. Uh, it's on a former banana plantation so that was like a very interesting location. The food was okay. <laughs> and uh, the portions were actually massive like we got a plate for two people and it was honestly just way too much um, I thought it would be super touristy because uh, you know it seemed like it's a tourist attraction but honestly mostly there were Spanish people, Spanish speaking people um, what I noticed though is that the Spanish speaking people received the banana after they paid and none of the tourists did so that was a little sad. I don't know. I guess the location it was great, but um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Behind me you can see the village of Masca. If you look up Tenerife anyways and things to do, this is like the number one thing that comes up that you cannot miss. And honestly, seriously, they are right. Do not miss it. It's so cute, beautiful. It's a village hidden in the middle of nowhere honestly there are mountains around you can see the ocean from here the ride here was interesting it seemed very dangerous but we made it uh, we also came here for sunset because somehow i thought that the sun would set right over there i saw a video from like two months ago and for some reason i thought that it would still be at the same place but unfortunately the sun is setting you can pan that way there's a big tree pan back to me yeah, that was kind of a slow shot, but the sun is setting over there. <laughs> I can go fast. Forget it. <laughs> We're still gonna try to go down there uh, while there is still some light and check it out. But yeah, if you're ever in Tenerife, don't miss this out.
As we were driving back to our Airbnb, we noticed in many places that there were a lot of fires. At first we thought that they were like wildfires from the heat or something, but it turns out they were all intentional and controlled and it was uh, sort of a celebration of the day of San Juan. And it's meant to send away all the bad and protect the island. We are currently at a banana plantation. You can see all the beautiful bananas around me. We're going to explore. You can either get a guided tour, but we have decided to walk around and explore ourselves because A, it was cheaper and B, you have all the information that you need on different boards that you can read yourself while you're going around. There is also a degustation moment, which we thought we would end with, but we started with. <laughs> wow. What did you say? Dish so. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Like a natural dip. It's salsa dip. What did you mean there's soap? It's cilantro. Oh, you don't like cilantro? You should know that it's the mm. This one is very good. What was it? Mojara hop. With a banana in it. We get to taste a bunch of banana products and some local stuff. And we also get to try a banana wine, which kind of tastes like regular wine in my opinion it was really interesting so if you're looking for something super local that has a little bit of a history then this is something you might want to do The views here are insane. This is almost the top of El Teide. We are currently at around 3,500 meters in height. Um, the air, like you can tell that it feels a little bit lighter or thinner. It feels like I have, I'm inhaling helium somehow. But anyways, uh, that right there is the peak of El Teide. You cannot go up unless you get a permit. And unfortunately, you have to do it quite far ahead. Um, but honestly, it seems like an easy hike, so if you manage to get it, I would totally recommend. You could actually see a little bit of smoke coming out of the volcano, so I suppose it must be really interesting. To get here, we have taken a cable car from like a base camp, and then it brings you up around a kilometer or more. The cable car was quite cramped. <laughs> It was not fun, but it was also okay. Uh, it costs around 40 euros to go up with the cable car and down. Yeah, I think that's it. It's really cool. Now enjoy the views with us. the day in a small village that was famous for its fish restaurants. I cannot remember the name of the small one that we visited, but it was really delicious. Perhaps I will find it and link it somewhere in the description or on the screen, but this was a perfect end to our day. The next day we stumbled upon this gorgeous little town called La Laguna. We followed a recommendation from a European coffee trip and found this uh, a whole coffee and balls place. The food was delicious and the town where it was located was also amazing. So I would absolutely recommend visiting this place. walking through a part of the Anaga rural park. Uh, the forest is super dense and we decided to do this little short hike which is supposed to take like what up to an hour maybe. Um, there is a path that is actually also wheelchair accessible 
so that's pretty cool and right now we are taking so there are three options uh number one is the wheelchair accessible one and there is number two which is like a medium difficulty and number three is like the hardest but it still seems pretty chill like the routes are well, well kept and so we're taking the number three that should lead us directly to a weather station enjoy the views and the sounds of the forest in the meantime that's the beautiful weather station in question <laughs> there is also a view though so let's have a look at that visit to the banana plantation we also bought uh what is this called passion fruit in english uh passion fruit uh, sparkling wine isn't passion fruit the same as maracuya well you can see what it is a bit higher you can see what it is yes <laughs> <laughs> um so now we are going to try a local sparkling wine Oh my god, that is so good! If you've ever been to the Azores, they have this drink called Kima, which is also made out of passion fruit, and it kind of tastes like that, but alcoholic version. This is one of the best things I've ever drank. We spent the entire evening on the beach finishing up the drink, and then the next day we visited Santa Cruz. The city was cute, but unfortunately on this day it was way too hot, and the city was a little crowded for our liking, so we just decided to go to a nearby beach and chill there. Exploring the top side of the island. I is it the north or you say it's the north? That's it. I think it's in the north, like it's the top part of the island. But I don't know. We've been having a lot of conversations about which is north, which is south. So I don't dare to say it again anymore. Uh, anyway, so we're exploring this part of the island, and it's, so far it feels like it's way hotter here. Somehow the air doesn't move at all. I would assume that. Uh, the wind blows from the bottom and it doesn't go then through the mountains here and it feels super humid and as if the air is like kind of pushing down on you we stopped at Garachico which is this cute little village um, there isn't much to do but I guess it's interesting to have a look at it they have their own production of aloe vera and a perfume store um, and now we're gonna check out some natural pools on the way and different beaches, maybe some other small villages, so let's see.
Tell us all about it. I almost didn't make it. Look at my knee. I hit the stones like 50 times. The one same stone all the time because the current was pulling me that way all the way. It's the same way. But it seemed much worse when you were in it. I feel like the big ones were breaking so badly in the back. Now it seems calmer. Or maybe I'm just... It's our last day on Tenerife, so we are just sitting on the beach, enjoying the last bits of sun and drinking some cold beer. We have spent the whole day on this beach that we named as Turtle Beach because there is this one turtle that always comes back. It was the Montaña Amarilla Beach. Um, it's not very comfortable to lounge there, but it was perfect for snorkeling and just hanging out swimming in the water. The beach that we are currently on is actually right in front of our Airbnb. I don't think I have showed this earlier in the video. I will add some footage here that I will definitely link where this location is in the video. When you look around, I also feel like I need to look around There's and it's so one. distracting. The beach that we are currently on is actually right in front of our Airbnb, which is super nice that you just get out and you have this option uh, in case you didn't find a beach during the day. There's also a pool in this Airbnb. I will definitely add the location and link in the description so that you, know, you can check it out yourself if you want to. The Airbnb is actually located in a village that is not very touristy, so it's not crowded, uh, but there also isn't that much to do or there aren't that many restaurants that you can pick out of. Talking about restaurants, we went to this village where we already ate before because we were hoping to visit the same restaurant again. Unfortunately, it was closed today, but we found another one in the same village and it was, again, delicious. That will be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you again next time. Bye.